All right, thanks for stopping into my uh, talk here at the North Pole at KringleCon. Uh, thank you, Santa, for inviting me up here. It's, a, it's really exciting to be here, but man, is it cold. Uh, man, I didn't expect it to be quite this cold. I was in San Francisco last week, and uh, man, uh, you know, I would have brought the thicker gloves. Makes it hard to type, but uh, no, that's all right. We'll, we'll keep rolling here. Um, appreciate everybody listening on Hashcat. The, the goal of this talk is to kind of give you an introduction to Hashcat, uh, what it is, how it works, um, and uh, a little bit of overview of the history of uh, kind of where it came from uh, when it kind of went open source. We'll talk about the differences between CPUs and GPUs and how Hashcat takes advantage of those. And then I will take a, a look at the different attack modes that Hashcat has. We'll talk about each one. And I'll do a, a very brief demonstration of each attack mode uh, in, at, at the very end here, just so you can kind of see uh, you know, how, how Hashcat goes about uh, processing you know, the input you give it and guessing passwords to, to crack password hashes. So Hashcat has been around for quite a while, but it was closed sourced until about 2015. And at that point, it, it went open source uh, and was released by its lead developer, Adam. Um, prior to Hashcat version three, Hashcat was had three different binaries that it actually used to, to do the password cracking. The first one uh, was just Hashcat, and that was used to do CPU-based password cracking. And then the next two were OCL Hashcat and CUDA Hashcat. Now, those were based on the, the different uh, types of uh, graphics cards that the tool could work with and, and the driver sets and all that required. Um, but uh, when we got to version 3.0 and later, uh, Adam and the Hashcat team combined all that into a single binary so that you know, it would only require a single binary to, to run all the different uh, password cracking capabilities, whether it's uh, CPU-based or uh, GPU-based. Uh, the latest version is Hashcat 5.1, which was released on uh, December 2nd, just a few days ago. Um, and so that's uh, a nice little Christmas present from the, the Hashcat team. And you can find out more about the tool itself, download the latest version, uh, read the Wikipedia, or read the, the tool's wiki, et cetera, out of hashcat.net. All right, so uh, as we get into looking at Hashcat, it'll do two types of cracking. I mentioned uh, CPU-based cracking and GPU-based cracking. And uh, to quickly uh, establish the difference between a CPU and a GPU, uh, I just want to you know, kind of define each one, explain what they're good for. So a CPU obviously is your central processing unit. It is a general purpose processor. It does the vast majority of the processing on your computer on a daily basis. Um, works great for password cracking, uh, but the speed itself is de uh, depends on the number of cores that it has available and that the uh, hashing algorithm that's in use. Um, because a CPU tends to have less cores, it maybe doesn't process as much as a as or as fast as a GPU does when it comes to password cracking. Now with G GPUs, the graphics processing unit is designed for high-end graphics display. Um, and with high-end graphics display, there's a lot of math that has to be done at the exact same time. I mean, it's, it's done in parallel. And it's doing all that math as it tries to update the screen so that uh, you know, the fancy graphics that you're doing either in playing video games or maybe designing something in something like AutoCAD or some other type of CAD utility uh, is at its peak. It's at a, a maximum uh, level of granularity and, and sophistication. So, um, there ends up being a little bit of confusion sometimes when people try to talk about which one's faster. And it really looks a little bit more like this. So if, uh, if you're gonna compare it processor to processor, the core to core, in, in terms of the processing power, your CPU is much, much faster than, than a GPU. Um, each GPU uh, core tends to be a little bit slower. However, if we measure what the, uh, the processing units do and, and how they work, we would uh, say that it's more like the purpose of a car, because we've got two cars on the screen here. We've got purpose of the cars to get a passenger from point A to point B. Well, the, the, the Corvette here on the left uh, is gonna go a lot faster, and it's gonna get from point A to point B a lot faster, right? And it's gonna take that, uh, a, a passenger, you know, whatever that distance is. Now, if you had a, um, our, our, nice little smart car over here on the right, going the same path, it may not move as fast, but it's still gonna get from point A to point B. But where we get the additional speed with the, C with the GPU over the CPU is actually the number of cores, 
Okay, so if we're comparing how many people we can move in some of a race to get people from point A to point B, um, it would be a bit more like this. It's more like the CPU, you get one car moving one person at a time back and forth. It may move that individual person faster, uh, but it's competing against an army of smart cars and with, you know, in multiples of, of how many cores there. So it's each one of those cars carrying an individual passenger, and so a lot more passengers are getting moved at the same time. So when you compare a CPU to a GPU, you can end up with speeds of up to maybe 50 times faster than what you would get uh, in terms of password cracking um, between a CPU and a GPU on the same hashing algorithm, right? So, you know, interesting note there is that GPUs are actually slower. Um, the individual cores are slower. However, with the thousands of cores that make up a GPU, you're, you're actually moving it at, at a really good rate. So uh, to fully utilize that GPU, all that work gets parallelized across all the cores. Okay? Um, it, Hashcat, as it does this, uh, takes words that it's gonna use to do its password cracking and guessing, and it uh, sends those to the GPU and then expands those words out with rules once they're on the GPU. Uh, it kind of breaks into a base base loop and a mod loop. And so the base loop is kind of handled by the central processing unit, helps create that uh, base list of words, and it sends those on over to the GPU where the mod loop, which is run on the uh, GPU, expands out the words and, and uh, that's where we get that additional speed with all the parallelization, okay? Now, okay, so we can do all that. Now, Hashcat, when it's running for on CPUs or GPUs, it will do either one of those, just fantastic, right? And it'll do four different attack types. Well, well, there's really five, but uh, you know, the, the, the hybrid at the bottom, it just switches which side the word list and the masks are on. So I'm gonna lump those together for this slide. So the first one uh, is the dictionary attack. This is where it just goes straight through a, a dictionary and goes word for word, calculates the uh, password hash for each, and compares against the hash that you're trying to crack. Uh, in combinator mode, it goes through and it concatenates words from multiple word lists. Okay? And then, so take uh, you know, maybe word list one, word list two, combine uh, the first word from word list one with all the words from word list two. Then go down to word list uh, number two on from word list one and combine with all the words from word list two. And it goes you know, word by word, uh, combining with everything between the, the left and the right word list at that point. It, it categorizes those as left and right based on where they show up on the command line. Uh, and then the last, last option is the brute force, and it goes through with a, a given character set and per position tries all uh, potential characters for uh, those character sets and positions. And typically what you'll see in the brute force mode is it goes through and, and tries a variety of different masks. And it tries the masks that are most common to what uh, individuals tend to see uh, or use as their passwords. So um, very common uh, uh, mask that you'll see is maybe a capital letter and then all lowercase uh, letters and numbers and then out to maybe eight, nine or 10 characters. And then may the, the last couple of characters may be either a number or a special character. And so then it tries all the combinations where capital letter, uh, all the lower case of everything, and then the numbers and special characters at the very end. Very easy to set up, and I'll do a quick demo with that in just a second here. And then the last option is uh, the hybrid attack. And so what the hybrid attack actually does is it, uh, it kind of does what the combinator attack did before. Um, and it kind of combines what I just talked about with the masks from the brute force. And it lets you uh, define those on the right and left side. So with the hybrid, um, where you end up with is you'll start with that base list, right? And then from the base list, you can add masks to the uh, other side or to use as that the, the other side of that dictionary, allowing you to brute force, and let's say, all of the characters up to three in length, right? And it'll spit those out. Um, so I'm gonna demo that stuff real quick for you just so you can kind of get an idea of what this looks like. This is on the uh, slingshot image. So if you've taken uh, 560 or, or would be interested in taking 560, we've got a Hashcat lab where we go uh, deep into that uh, at SANS. But uh, I'm gonna demo real quick Hashcat 4.1.0. And um, I'm gonna do, I have three different word lists here. Okay, and so I'm going to get a quick idea 
of what's there. Three different word lists. There's only two words in each one, just to keep this simple. So I've got dog, cat, apple, banana, car, and truck. Okay. So if we take a look at what we do with hashcat, I'm going to do hashcat. I'm going to pipe it through to less just so you can kind of see where we are, where we're starting here. So this is the help file, and we can we're going to give it an attack mode. Uh, M gives us the hash type, meaning the, the type of hash that we're going to break. Um, and then there's a lot of other options in here to, to fine tune hashcat. But to, to do the very basics, you get to let's see the different hash modes. Each hash mode has a number. Get past all the hash modes here and show you the attack modes and their numbers. All right, so here's our attack modes. So we have um, the straight, which straight is also the same as a, a dictionary attack, as I mentioned. Uh, one is a combination, meaning it's going to take the combination of two different um, two different word lists. Brute force will actually uh, do a brute force based on a specific mask. And then uh, six and seven are the hybrid attacks that I was talking about. And the only difference there is which side um, the the masks end up showing up. Okay. So real quick, if we just do hash cat. Now I'm going to do something called std out. And this is just so you can see what um, what words hash cat generates as it goes through with these different types of attacks. So for instance, if I do a standard out and I do um, a, an attack mode of zero, and then I give it word list one. Okay. You can see it basically goes through. Uh, you can ignore that error, but uh, it tries each word exactly as it shows up in the password file. Okay. Now, if I do the same thing, but I switch to the combinator. This is a combinator attack, and I can now give it the second word list. And you can see it went word by word in the first word list and appended the words from the second word list to the end of it. So we have dog apple, dog banana, cat apple, cat banana. Okay. If we do the exact same thing here, we're going um, to take a look. We can mix it up completely by doing switching which side these guys show up on. Right, so this one. And you can see everything is then completely inverted. Right? So we start with the fruits and then we have the animals after that. Okay. That's cool. Now I'm going to go back up to the the um, straight attack. So if I'm doing a straight attack with a dictionary, I can also apply rules in hashcat. Okay, and there's a few different rules that it will allow you to do. All right, so this is the base, best 64. It's one of the most basic rule sets available in Hashcat. But what you'll see is it's going to take that wordless one, which is dog cat, and it's going to apply a whole bunch of different rules to that word list. And what you'll see is variations of dog and cat pop out with all sorts of substitutions and things appended to the beginning, the end, etc. So, all right, so it ran very quickly there. But if I go back through here, you can see it's appended numbers, it's doubled the word, right? It doubled the last letter of, and then doubled the word, right? Tripled the last letter of the word, right? Uh, substituted um, an L for the D. You can see it just does all sorts of mangling to try different things. Now, if I want to know, okay, roughly then, direct standard error to dev null so it doesn't get counted, and then type it through to wc-l, you can see that my two words were then turned into about 154 words. Okay, cool. Now, uh, if we come back up here, Go back to here. We're going to do a brute force. Now, brute force is going to be a little bit different here. Um, 
I'm not going to let this run for very long, but uh, it's going to run and it's going to spit some stuff out, but uh, it'll um, begin iterating through and you'll, you'll see the changes as it goes. Uh, maybe it won't let me do that on the standard app. There we go. Needed a mask. Okay, so the, the three that I gave it just said try every single type of character and do three of them. Okay, and so I could do the same thing here by doing uh, lower, oops, lower, nice way of a, it's going to do lower, a lowercase, a lowercase, and then a digit. Actually, I'm just going to shorten this up to just two, just so you can see the output without it being too much. Okay, and as you can see, it went straight through the alphabet, and then it went number by number through through the alphabet as well. And it spits all that out, so you can brute force character by character. Okay, cool. So the last piece here is the combination. So if I give it word list one, and I give it a digit digit so what this is going to do is take wordless one which is dog cat and it's going to append every combination of zero through nine to the right side of the word list it's going to think for a second and spit that out and then you can see that it goes through word by word number by number you can see the the um the order isn't quite what you would expect but uh it still gets through every single one of them. And then you can do other interesting things here too. So for instance, we could add a J, which is gonna apply a rule and say, uh, let's say we want to append a dash so that it's the word dash and then let's do one number so that it's nice and easy to see the output. There we go. Right. So that's the basics of kind of how Hashcat works. You can then use this. Now, this is printing all that out to the screen, but the only thing that I would need to do to, to apply this to an actual password uh, would be to add something like dash m1000, which is uh, a uh, ntlm password, and then give it um, something like hashes.txt, which would have all the password hashes uh, that I was trying to crack. And then hit go and it would go through and, and try you know exactly what you see on the screen at the moment against all those password hashes. All right, well, I really appreciate your time. Hopefully you all have a fantastic time here at CrinkleCon and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Right. If you have any questions for me, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, this is my Twitter account and, and my email address. Merry Christmas, uh, happy holidays, and uh, have a happy new year.